Elrock rock 30 6 here. Uh, today we're going to do a video on um, how to make uh, moose stew. Actually, it's going to be called Newfie moose stew. That's what we're making today. Uh, it's a great thing we do in the eastern parts of Canada. As you know, in Newfoundland, we have a lot of moose. And this is the recipe from Newfoundland. It's called Newfie moose stew. All right, so let's go over the items you're going to need to make this um, recipe. I'm going here. All right. First, you're going to need butter. You're going to need tomato paste. One onion, maybe two, if you like a lot of onions in your uh, stew. Okay. You're going to need thyme. And I'd uh, like to put a little bit of Italian spice in it. Uh, you're going to need flour. You're going to need um, beef bouillon or broth. You're going to need garlic, two cloves of garlic, or I like to get these jars of garlic. I put two whopping spoons full in. Two to three pounds of moose meat. Okay. You're going to need salt and pepper. Okay. You're going to need wine. You're going to need parsley. You're going to need carrots, uh, two carrots, or I got a bag of these guys, the baby carrots, and I throw that in. All right. And you're going to need bay leaves and celery. Unfortunately, I don't have celery to do it today, but uh, two sticks of celery is good to put in there, or maybe three if you like a lot of celery. And also, you're going to need potatoes. And I have to go get those out of the cupboard. But anyways, you're going to need uh, about four potatoes, uh, depending on the size, or two really big ones would be fine as well. And uh, we'll start uh, making this recipe and show you how it's done. Our thing. So first off, get a big pan and a pot like this. I like to have a pan on the side. You just use a pot for everything if you want. But if you use a pan, then you can cook more meat at once and get things going more productively. So uh, what you do is you put like a big wop of uh, butter inside the pan and the pot. So we're going to start doing that. So turn the stove on. Now that we got the uh, butter going, put in your moose meat inside the pan. Okay. Now you don't want to cram it in there. You want a bit of space in between, but it doesn't have to be like too spacious either. Just enough that, you know, Everything can circulate in there and it cooks nicely, okay? So think about that, the spacing in there, okay? So here we go, we're putting all that in there, okay? And you just wanna lightly uh, fry this, like about five minutes per side, three minutes per side, depending on how it cooks on your stove, okay? Until it's like nice and golden. And then uh, once you're done doing that, then you take it off the stove and then you start cooking your onions. So here we go, I'm doing this because I want to cook as much as possible. So I got two things going here. So. Put my moose meat in here as well. Okay. Stove is really hot, then it's three, uh, sorry, half ways. If it's not so hot, then three quarters of the way. So I got mine, my setting goes up to seven. I got it at four right now. Okay. I'll probably put it around five now just to get it going. And if it's too, if it seems like it's cooking too fast, and I'll just turn it down a little bit. But five out of seven for my stove seems to do the trick. And uh, yeah, you don't want to like have it too hot, but you don't want it too low either. You just want to like more or less just. Fry the outside and have a nice texture, like golden texture to go into the uh, stew. Okay, so here it's all going right now. Here you see the butter's uh, going there. Same with the, the pan. And we are going to chop up my onion now while that's going, because that'll be the next thing to do is uh, chopping the onion. All right, so you take your onion, okay? Cut it up. And, you know, you keep it on uh, once in a while, take a look over your meat, make sure it's cooking properly and you're not burning it. Okay. And there we go. So I'll just chop this up here. And, you know, just be uh, mindful when you cut your onions and anything else for that matter. Make sure your knife is nice and sharp and that your fingers are out of the way and always pay attention to what you're doing, never get distracted, okay? You know, this is uh, dangerous if you're not paying attention and doing things properly, okay? And uh, yeah, just uh, cut, up, cut up these uh, small pieces that I'm doing and that's ready to go into the stew. All right, so when I am uh, done with the meat, this is gonna go in uh, with butter now and we're gonna do that for about a minute and then after one minute goes by, we're gonna put in garlic, okay? So when you start seeing the blood there, see the blood on the meat, and it's uh, rising to the top there, that's pretty much when you uh, flip the meat over and brown the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, uh, brown the other side, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like, see? See now it's nice and brown? Okay. It's hard to cook with holding a phone in one hand, but here we go. All right, so it's brown on the other side. I might actually flip it one more time because I like it a little browner than that. 
but that's what you want. You want it nice and uh, golden brown on the one side, and then do the other side, and the same goes for the other side. All right, so now this is ready, okay? So I'm gonna take this out, okay? And once we remove all the meat in the pot, we are gonna put more butter in, and not too much butter though, just a little bit. And we are going to saute our onions. That's why we're cutting onions to get it ready for the pot. Okay. All right, so this is getting a little too hot, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. All right. Put a little bit more butter in. Okay. And get my onions. Put that in. Okay, now we're gonna get our onions, saute them, okay? So we'll get that going. So here we go, onions are starting to saute. So we're gonna stir this around, okay? Now we get our garlic, either chop up two cloves of garlic, or if you do this, what I do, like, I get these jars of garlic. It's a lot easier than having to chop it up. And I get two whopping spoons like this, okay? And I put it in, okay? I love garlic. If you don't like garlic as much as I do, then you, one spoon would be fine. But I like garlic in my stew, so I got two, okay? So now we got two things of garlic in there, and we're going to serve that around, okay? Okay? There we go. Okay? And we're going to let that cook for a bit. One of the best parts of this recipe we're doing now, we're going to take this uh, wine and put a big glug of wine inside the pot. All right, so now we're going to put this wine in. You know, a nice big glug right there, okay? And that's good. Okay, and then we're going to stir. Next, we're going to pour all this beef broth inside the pot. Okay, put the whole beef broth inside. So this one here is 900 millimeters, so that's what I do. I put the whole thing in, and then cook two cups of water. Then stir, okay? All right, so when that is uh, start, uh, getting ready to boil, get your potatoes, start cutting those up. And you know, depending on what size cubes you want, it's up to you. Um, I do uh, not too big, not too small, like medium sized cubes myself. And because uh, I have kids, so that's why I make them a little smaller. But uh, yeah, and I don't take the skin off. If you don't like skin, then take the skin off. That's fine. But yeah, at this point, depending on how big you're making your stew, I do four potatoes. You do two if you want. But I like a large pot of stew, so I do four. And you just cut these up, okay? And then I'll go over here and add it to my pot. Next, I take a can of tomato paste, okay? Open it up. Take a butter knife over my pot. Put the entire can of tomato paste inside my stew, okay? And then once you put that in there, stir. Next, take your parsley. Now, depending on how much you like parsley, I, I use about a half a bundle to chop it up, okay? Now, I don't put all of it in the pot right now. I put in um, about three quarters to half in now, and then I save some to top off a stew when it, once it's in the bowl. I actually put more on top of the stew when I serve it to give it a nice looking um, before when you bring it out. It's just a nice presentation for the stew. So anyways, I really like mine fine. I don't like it too um, big in there, so that's why I'm really cutting this up, okay? All right, so now you see, I'll grab a handful, put it in the pot, okay? And come over here and stir, okay?
Now, um, you either can get fresh thyme or you can get uh, ground thyme. I got ground thyme here I'm going to put in, okay? And you put in pepper, okay? Put the pepper in and we put salt, okay? Now, I mean, some people like to be precise. I just go by feel, okay? So here I am, I put the salt in. All right, so once you do that and then you put your bay leaf in, I'm not going to show you that, but put your bay leaf in and then you stir. Either you can get a potato and grind it and put it in the stew, the, the thick in the stew, or you can do what I do is get flour with water, put it in a container, okay? Seal it, okay? And then I shake it, all right? So I take this, shake it, okay? And then put it in the stew, okay? So now after I put that in there, I stir again, okay? And then uh, after about 20 minutes, you put in your carrots after. After the potatoes cook for a bit, then you put in your carrots. All right, so now we uh, take our carrots. Uh, this has been on the stove for about a half an hour. Add that in. Because you don't want to overcook your carrots and then they're like soggy and stuff. Potatoes take longer than carrots. So I put my carrots in now and then I'm going to stir. All right, so now it's uh, going really nice here. And um, we'll put another bit of uh, gulp of wine in here. Okay. And then we're going to stir again. And then we're going to let it cook for about an hour. So there you go. After I put the carrots in, I let it uh, simmer for an hour. And I got my... Uh, Newfie stew in the bowl here with a baguette, a glass of wine, and I sprinkled some parsley on it for presentation and flavor. And voila, there you go. You have Newfie Moose stew. So if you do um, like this recipe, uh, I, I think you should try it. It's very easy to do. And also, uh, just a little tip, if you uh, don't like a bit of game taste in your meat, um, one thing you can do the night before, cut up your meat, soak it in one part uh, vinegar and three, uh, sorry, four parts water. So that's one part vinegar, four parts water. Let it soak for in the fridge for the night. And then the next day you uh, do what I showed you in the recipe. And also you can do this with deer as well. This recipe is good for deer meat. So this is Al Rock 30 odd six. If you like my channel, uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, hopefully uh, I'll do another video for you guys soon.